When people talk about powerful women in ancient China, almost every single person who has the slightest knowledge of Chinese history would think of one woman and one woman only, Wu Zetian. The time was Tang Dynasty, uh, an era that Chinese people have never stopped cherishing, which explains why even today we call it Chinatowns, streets of Tang people. We're pretty much the center of the universe back then, and it was a time of unparalleled prosperity. Emperor Taizong was the second emperor of Tang. He kept a horse from the breed uh, named Shi Zicong. It was a fine breed from the northern part of the continent, and the horse he had was so strong and aggressive that nobody could go near it. Then one of his young concubines, probably still in her teens, uh, approached him and said, I can tame the horse, but I need three things. I need an iron whip, a hammer, and a dagger. If one will submit when I hit it with the whip, then I'll crush his head with a hammer. And if it still wouldn't surrender, I will use the dagger to tear his throat open. It was unclear whether Taizong really took her advice, but he was certainly very, very impressed. That young girl later rose to the highest power of the country and declared herself the emperor and her name was later known as Wu Zetian. There are numerous um, stories, anecdotes, and speculation theories um, over how Wu Zetian went from the lowest ranking concubine to the emperor. Um, to put it in brief terms, it includes hooking up with um, the heir to the throne and basically killing a lot of people, um, whoever they might be, including your own children. When Wu Zetian was first admitted into the royal palace at the age of 13, she was the lowest ranking concubine, and Taizong died before she made much progress, and she was immediately demoted into a Buddhist nun and after his death, because she had no children. And unfortunately, while she was still in Taizong's harem, she attracted the attention of Taizong's son, the heir to the throne, the future ruler of China, Li Zhi, who was later known as Emperor Gaozong. Wu Zetian was said to be an exceptional beauty, and Li Zhi missed her so much that he brought her back into his bedroom as soon as he's done mourning his father. Wu Zetian then regained her place in the most powerful family in China, and since then she only moved upwards. What came next was a lot like the Hunger Games, where she mercilessly killed every man and woman who got in her way, of becoming Gaozong's empress. Uh, she allegedly strangled her own infant daughter just to frame the then Empress Wang of Gaozong as the murderer. And you thought her journey would end when she has obtained the highest position a woman can have in China. But Wu Zetian has only ever defied social norms. Even before his eventual death, um, Gaozong has been letting Wu Zetian handle national affairs on his behalf. And after Gaozong's death, um, their son took the throne, which he lost a year later because his mother, Wu Zetian, was not very happy with his political decisions. She then appointed another son to be the emperor, who she again demoted into the crown prince when she decided to crown herself in 690 AD, when she was 66 years old. That's what makes her so different from other women in history who have controlled the country. Um, she was the de facto um, ruler of the country long before she took the throne. I mean, she was the empress and then a dowager and, and then everybody pretty much bowed to her anyway. And, but she was not satisfied with her role. Even as the empress mother, she was not happy with this role, which to many other women would meant the highest power and there is nothing beyond. But she didn't stop, she wanted more. And she could have just let her sons be her puppet, but she didn't even want that. Um, she wants the throne. She wants to be emperor. And now that's a spot no other woman in Chinese history has ever claimed. And she got it. If you neglect the fact that um, Wu Zetian was a woman, her role to the throne was really not that different from how other people rose to power. You maintain close relationships with the most powerful people in the country and basically pave your way with many many dead bodies. But because she's a woman, her legacy was under constant attack by um, historians after her death. And that is to say decisions which 
um, would have been ordinary had it come from a man suddenly become unacceptable or somehow less tolerable because she's a woman. Chinese emperors almost always um, had more women that they can possibly f and they can keep as many women and men in their palaces um, as they pleased. And for thousands of years, hardly anyone ever questioned the insane size of royal harems filled with young women who may never see the emperor in their lifetime simply because he had too many to choose from. But when Wu Zetian kept a couple of toy boys in her bedroom and showered them with money and power, the slut shaming started. I mean, not that he was not corrupt to give government positions to underqualified people. I mean, she was indeed abusing her power, but notice the double standard here. Wu Zetian pretty much traumatized the men of her time. She traumatized the men in her family, men who worked for her, and of course the men who were um, against her. Not many of them come out alive. She was also an inspiration to um, the women of her time. Um, her daughter, the daughter-in-law, granddaughter. Um, she proved the first time in Chinese history that a woman is capable of officially um, claiming the highest power of the country and be very good at the job. And there was indeed an outburst of um, ambitious princesses seeking power after her death, although due to um, a very, very powerful backlash from the men of the royal family, as well as their own lack of um, skills and intelligence to climb to the throne, all of them ultimately failed. Despite her extremely cruel and bloody rise to power, um, Wu Zetian was a very successful emperor. She grew the economy, um, encouraged cultural activities, and promoted many, many talented people. Um, she also invented new Chinese characters and um, ways to prevent financial fraud. I mean, she was just really um, smart and creative in general. China under her role was in a relatively stable and healthy state. Um, although you probably want to be um, an ordinary civilian under her role rather than someone who's close to her because to be very honest not many people can get out of her power complex alive and well even if you're her family or lover. Wu Zetian is a very difficult um, historical figure to talk about because her life is so full of drama and unconventional events and even she gave up the attempt to comment on her own life. Unlike other empress um, who covered their monuments with praises and their life's achievements, um, Wu Zetian left a blank monument in front of her mausoleum where she was buried with her husband. Uh, we don't know whether she really put it there herself, or if so, why she did that. But what would you say about a woman who was too badass to bother with what people might think of her post-mortem? In the next video, I would continue to talk about Wu Zetian, but from a slightly different perspective, um, which is contemporary media representation and its patriarchal subtext. And I'll see you next time.